way too much bullish sentiment right now on Bitcoin. Doesn't mean that Bitcoin isn't going to go eventually higher, but the euphoria out there is definitely a red flashing light for me. Hello everyone. Today, master trader Gareth Soloway debates popular YouTube crypto trader Jason Pizzino on the current macro situation on the stock market, the Fed, and Bitcoin crypto outlook in the short and long term. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. Bitcoin BTC Price action is right on track when it comes to sealing new all-time highs, new data suggests. A suite of price metrics from on-chain analytics firm Glassnode released on April 11 hints that Bitcoin's current halving cycle is playing out in classic style. With BTC slash USD up over 70% in 2023 and far from its $15,600 lows in November 2022, analysts are already considering the role of next year's block subsidy halving. Set to cut the amount of BTC miners mint per block from 6.25 BTC to 3.125 BTC. The upcoming halving represents an emission decrease exactly like others that preceded it. Bets are therefore increasing over the impact on Bitcoin price performance, likewise copying past halvings, with the event itself acting as a springboard for all-time highs. From my end, just looking at the, the technicals, what I'm seeing is the lows have been in through June and October, and we base a lot of our analysis off timing, so cycles and, and timing. And of course, then we go to the, the, the macro picture of the economy and the real estate. So we look at a macro economic, uh, economic and real estate cycle, which lasts approximately 18 to 20 years. And we're in the stage now where we're getting that last final leg up, which will uh, impact the stocks, it'll impact real estate going up, it'll impact cryptos going up, but we're in that last stage. So I think we're both similar where we expect something major to collapse, but I think in terms of the timing, that's the only thing that we differ in. Like I expect a big recession, but I don't see that coming till after 2026, which you're oh, thinking wow. somewhere in 2023. So I think we have this last leg up where everything gets absolutely ballistic, and then we have this big catastrophic downturn. Oh. And, and, and this is just my curiosity, but then what's what's the catalyst for that next move up, right? Where we go into 2026, because are, are you thinking that the Federal Reserve then is going to start printing money again by the end of this year, let's say, or are they gonna be lowering interest rates or, or how do we get there considering how we've gotten to where we are now? Yeah, obviously a good question because that's, that's kind of like, well, how is that actually happening? And sorry about my eye, it's been too much. I've been in the surf too much. So the, the uh, salt water is screwed. It looks no. like I've got pink eye or something. Can't, so. I can't even tell, but no worries. All, right. <laughs> All good. Um, how do we get there? We're starting to see signs of us getting there because I guess when we look back to the macro picture, would you agree that S&P has to go up in order for Bitcoin and cryptos to go up? And if you don't, that's okay too. The no, market. I do. I do. In general, yeah. it's, I mean, even though we've seen decoupling every once in a while, right? Like the for banking crisis, for the most yeah. part, it's still a risk asset. Correct. Yeah. I, so I do agree with that. So that's kind of where we look back next. So I, I have to sort of just mention that because then for us, in terms of the macro cycle, real estate is what underpins the entire economy. Like that's where the most money is, trillions and trillions of dollars compared to the stock market. So if real estate is holding up, the rest of the markets will eventually hold up. Yeah, we'll go through cycles like Bitcoin, you know, boom and a bust, but it's getting higher lows. So real estate is still holding up, broadly speaking, definitely seeing it go up at the moment, ever so slightly in Australia and some areas of the US again, after everyone was expecting a collapse. So how do we get there? Well, the banks and the government are starting to put, you know, bring more credit into the system. We saw that just with that bit of printing, I know everyone's yeah. going to point to the 300 billion and the 90 billion. Of course, there's China printing, but the thing that we're seeing now, and it just happened in the, this is what we've been pointing out for a couple of years now, the mortgages are getting longer. Did you see that recently in the US where they went to a 40 year mortgage? U UK went to a 50 year, China is allowing up to 80 years. So not an 80 year mortgage, wow. but you can get a mortgage until you're 80. So you know what happens there it's like once you spread out the cost of a property it makes it cheaper right. and so then you start to get this flurry of people moving in so it's not necessarily that we need to see the government printing more and more money they'll start to ease 
the regulations that they had put in from the GFC make banking easier again because they need the market to go up in order to keep everyone happy. Eventually it does collapse, so I agree with you on that. It has to collapse. Yeah. But I think we have this one last push like a final pump into an altcoin season, except because it's real estate, these things take years and everyone's going to be scrambling to get on board and they're all going to freak out and get into the peak. At, they're going to get into real estate at the wrong time, at the peak, which happens every single cycle. So yeah. that's kind of where we're at. I, what's interesting, at least from my perspective, and this is, again, I love this fact that we differ in these ways, is that I was I was thinking about real estate earlier today and I'm kind of saying to myself, okay, what's how do you come up with a bull case for real estate? Because if the economy stays healthy, then interest rates in theory are probably going to have to stay higher for longer, which makes it more expensive to, to buy a house. Now, granted, you're talking about 40 year mortgages, 80 year, I mean, if you do spread out the costs like that, it does bring the cost down or the monthly payment. But then on the other side, I was thinking, okay, well, if the economy weakens, interest rates start coming down. We've even seen that here in the US, the, the 30 year has come in because expectations are for a weaker economy. But then if you have a weaker economy, people are losing their jobs. There's not as much job security. And so people would be a little bit more hesitant to buy homes, even with lower interest rates. So, so I was really, you know, Again, I didn't really contemplate the, the longer 40 year or 80 year type mortgages. But for me, it was, I was having such a hard time figuring out how real estate starts to really gain and go up again, you know, at least in the near term. We've, you know, so many people will tell you the dollar is over. It's the great demise of the dollar. And from my perspective, I agree that eventually the dollar will not be the reserve currency. But I, I always find that people make make it out like it's happening tomorrow. And this is really something that's a much, much longer thing where it's, it's almost untradeable in that respect in that, you know, you, you can't invest today for the dollar to not be the reserve currency tomorrow. It's because it, it's a way too long of a trade. I mean, you're going to be sitting in it for potentially years. What are your thoughts on like that? Well, I'll just put up the dollar chart while we're talking about it there. I, I don't think the dollar is going anywhere fast at this point we have well my belief is that the dollar is going down in value but that doesn't mean it's going to be replaced by the chinese one or russian ruble or whatever else they come up with for now it's still the you know the major world reserve currency yep. but you know like that's what we just heard over the last few weeks where it's like us the us dollar is not being used for trade in france for what was it trade with uh, africa and then Russia's not using it to pay for whatever they buy off China and China's not using it to pay for things with with uh, Africa. You know, like it's just been this big whole balloon of fear on the US dollar. Mm -hmm. And it was exactly the same thing six months ago. Remember that September top? It was yeah. um, <laughs> everyone piling to the US dollar. The euro was collapsing, the, the pound was going down, they were going to parity and everyone was just saying the US dollar is the next greatest thing. It was you know, everything is coming back to it. Way too much bullish sentiment right now on Bitcoin. Doesn't mean that Bitcoin isn't going to go eventually higher, but the euphoria out there is definitely a red flashing light for me. Yeah, like it, like the trend is coming to an end eventually. There's just, it's like, will it go from 30 and a half to 35 quickly, or will it be 30 and a half to 32? Like, right. it could be a big, a big move, but it's been up for five months. You yeah, gotta, absolutely. <laughs> you've got to think about that too. And actually, I mean, here, I'm going to get rid of some of these trend lines because it's a little confusing here for people. But but one of the things I'm watching very carefully is you basically have Bitcoin now just number one, piercing the even numbers. So I, I'm not sure in trading how much you pay attention to even numbers, but I found in trading that number one, the, the retail investor puts stops at even numbers. So so number one, generally, those stops will get taken out because the, the, the algos will pierce them, which will then take out the short stop. And, and ultimately it, it gets max euphoria, right? When you see all of a sudden a three instead of a two in front of Bitcoin, 20,000 to 30, it just creates that like, oh, I got to get in now because here goes the run. And those usually denote short-term tops. But then also what I think is fascinating on Bitcoin is that you have so much of so much former trading areas right in this 30,000 level, right? So if we look at the bull market from 2021, when it dumped out, this was the low. So psychologically, and you can see it right over here too, before it broke down, that was a huge, huge level. So it makes sense that right around 30,000, this is going to be a major psychological level for Bitcoin to try to get through. It doesn't mean it can't pierce it. Like you said, I mean, it's already pierced 30,000, 
but it, for me, this is the big level to test whether or not can it get above this level and then can it hold above this level. So yeah, it's interesting, really interesting. Would you say, would you say that's one of your invalidation points to the downside? Do you still think 15 and a half will be broken? Yeah, so that this is my my key level. So for me, if it were to get above this area here, let's say 30 and a half, 30,500 is kind of that line in the sand, down sloping line, flat line. So if we were to stay above this for a certain amount of days and really start establishing it as a support level, then I think you have to say that the low is, is probably in, right, based on that. Now, if we re get rejected here and we start breaking some of these technical supports, then I do think that things could get nasty very, very quickly, especially if we see the stock market take a big leg down, the risk off trade start to come back in. But um, I, I do think the low is in based on, um, I, I do a lot with volume. I don't know if you focus on, on volume at all. Not as much, so I love that you do. So the volume for lows, you can see here, this was November. That's the, uh, I'll put it on candle so it makes it a bit fatter for everyone. Extreme volume. So I'm on Coinbase. We know that Coinbase had some pretty significant volume in the last several years. And prior to that, it wasn't one of the, the primary exchanges. But extreme volume at lows when the market couldn't push any lower typically means that this, the low is in. You can see we had the capitulation and the price really didn't go that much further from June. This was the FTX collapse and that was the Celsius Voyager BlockFi collapse. Uh, and then the price pretty much on big volume again broke back to the upside and took out all of that fear from the last uh, six months. So if we do get a pullback, I wanna see where the high comes in first, maybe in that mid 30s. And then we'll have a look to somewhere in the high 20s to low 30s as a pullback range. But I mean, bottoms have just, they, they always, almost always, at least in cryptocurrency, form on massive volume. Yep. You can see the COVID crash. And it starts to make sense when you think about it. There's a lot of trading going on. You've got retail getting extremely fearful. FTX collapsed, you know, the biggest thing that we've seen, almost like a black swan event for crypto. Yep. At that point, well, lots of people selling, lots of smart money buying up. That's why the price came to a stopping point, you know, like stopping volume. And then it turned around, like it just couldn't push any lower. Philb Philb, a co-founder of the trading suite Decentrader, recently doubled down on his conviction that Bitcoin's all-time high next cycle will come in 2025 and see a BTC price tag of around $180,000. He noted that as time passes, Bitcoin price gains will see a tapering effect, smaller comparative gains in percentage terms with each cycle. If you enjoy this highlight videos, Please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.